chapter 7. Then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mori in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Fura thy servant down to the host and thou shalt hear what they say. And afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Fura his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it that it fell, and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, with empty pitchers, and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp, in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets, and brake the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets, and brake the pitchers, and held the lamps in their left hands, and the trumpets in their right hands, to blow withal. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran, and cried, and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Bethshittah in Zeredath, and to the border of Abel-Meholah, unto Tabor. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites, and take before them the waters unto Bethbera and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together, and took the waters unto Bethbera and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. And they slew Oreb upon the rock, Oreb and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side Jordan. Psalm 50 The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken, and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion the perfection of beauty God hath shined. 
Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine in the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee? When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentedst with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise, glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Good morning, and a successful day, and a successful week to you. This is one week closer to eternity. May each day find us growing stronger in our Christian experience and in our walk with Jesus. Today I'm reading Judges chapter 7, verse 20, 21, and 22. Judges 7, verses 20, 21, and 22. The Bible says, And the three companies blew the trumpets, and brake the pictures, and held the lamps in their left hands, and the trumpets in their right hands, to blow withal. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place, round about the camp, and all the host ran, and cried, and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the hosts. And the hosts fled to Bethshita in Zerarath, and to the border of Abel-Meholah, unto Tabath. Today's message is entitled, God is able to deliver. God is able to deliver. Let us pray, dear God. We all need to hear from you today. And we ask that you will prepare our hearts and our minds to hear from you is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. A group of academics and historians have compiled this startling information. Since 3600 BC, since 3600 BC, the world has known only 292 years of peace. During this period, there have been 14,351 wars, large and small, in which 3.64 billion people have been killed. The value of the property destroyed is equal to a golden belt around the earth, 97.2 miles wide and 33 feet thick. Since 650 BC, there have also been 1,656 arms races, only 16 of which have not ended in war. 
the remainder ended in the economic collapse of the countries involved. Friend of mine, the Bible speaks of the war between the Israelites and the Midianites in Judges chapter 7. Friend of mine, there are some parallels between the battle of Gideon and his army against the Midianites and the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Each of us must choose a side in this great controversy and whether or not we are victorious will depend on the side we choose how we relate to the battle, and how we relate to God and the instructions he gives and has given us. We say that again. There are parallels between the battle of Gideon and his army against the Midianites and the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Each of us must choose a side in this great controversy and whether or not we are victorious will depend on the side we choose, how we relate to the battle and how we relate to God and the instructions he gives and has given us. Point number one, we cannot save ourselves. Point number one, we cannot save ourselves. Judges chapter 7 and verse 2 declares, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. We cannot save ourselves. We need God to save us. Now Gideon had 32 thousand men according to verse 3. The Midianites had 135,000 according to chapter 8 verse 10. Gideon's faith must have been severely tested when the Lord told him that those who were with him were too many. Friend of mine, we cannot save ourselves and trust in our own human strength to live righteously. We cannot do right in our own strength. If we could save ourselves, we would boast about it. And if the Israelites could have saved themselves with their 32,000 men, they would have boasted about it and would have forgotten that it was God who helped them. They would think it was because of their numbers. Oh, friend of mine, we cannot save ourselves. The Bible is clear. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 declares, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Point number two, there is a class of people who will not succeed with Christ and who will not find salvation and be saved in God's kingdom. These folk are represented by some of the soldiers in Gideon's army. Those who will not be saved and who are represented in Gideon's army are the fearful, the fearful. God said to Gideon in Joshua 7 verse 3, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And they returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and they remained ten thousand. So more than half of Gideon's army were scared and fearful people. The Bible is clear that the fearful will not be saved. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving, but the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There are people who are scared to serve Jesus. They are afraid of what they, their pastor and their church friends will say, even though they know what is truth, and they know that where they are worshiping, truth is not being taught, and they're seeing the effects of this in the wickedness around them in the church, but they would not leave because they are scared about what people will say. Some are scared about what parents will say. Well, I've been a Muslim all my life or a Hindu all my life. And, and if they leave, they will be persecuted and perhaps even killed. 
they will be struck out of the the family's will and would not receive any inheritance because they're from perhaps a Muslim or a Hindu family and they have riches, so they are scared to leave. But the Bible says the fearful, those who are afraid to step out and serve God, will have their part in the lake of fire burning with Satan, which is the second death. And so the fearful had to leave the battle. In Judges chapter 7, point number 3, we can see some parallels between this battle between the Israelites and the Midianites and the great controversy between Christ and Satan, heaven and hell, righteousness and unrighteousness. Point number 3 of the parallels. Those who do not take their salvation seriously will eventually be lost. Satan will trick them up with temptation and they will yield themselves and become slaves of Satan. The great controversy and our choice of Jesus and the winning side demands our urgent attention. We must make serving Jesus a priority if we will be saved. We say that again. Point number three, those who do not take their salvation seriously will eventually be lost. Satan will trick them up with temptation and they will yield themselves and become servants of Satan. The great controversy and our choice of Jesus and the winning side demands our urgent attention. We must make serving Jesus a priority if we will be saved. Judges chapter 7 verse 4 to 7 declares, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be, that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth dung upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouths, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lappeth, that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go every one, go every man unto his place. Friend of mine, you see, the people having been led to the brook, evidently expected to cross immediately and advance to the camp of the enemy some distance on the opposite side. A few were eager to begin the engagement, and as they crossed the brook, they merely scooped up a little water in their hands and immediately passed forward. Others, fearful of the impending battle and with but little hope in victory, saw here an excuse for tarrying. They knelt down and leisurely drank their fill of water. Those who hurriedly took a little water in their hand and sucked it up as they passed forward toward the camp of the enemy numbered only 300. With these, the Lord promised to bring about the defeat of the Midianites. You see, friend of mine, that sifting exercised by the water. The sifting had served to remove from the army those who were tainted with idolatry and it served to single out those who were men of courage and faith, men whose confidence in God had not been vitiated by, by idolatrous worship and practice. Friend of mine, if we would be saved at last, we must always be ready to battle or besetting sins in the strength of Jesus and be ever ready to work with alacrity for Jesus. And so those who lapped the water in their hands were eager for the fight. They were ready. They were pushing forward. And those who took their time and kneeling on their knees and on their hands and to drink water were not really ready for the battle. And so the Bible reminds us that we should have the same, same attitude of eagerness and striving to do God's will and to enter his kingdom. 
Luke chapter 13 and verse 24 says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Matthew 7, 14 says, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. And so God says, strive, put forth some energy like the soldiers who were lapping water. They were eager for the battle. Jesus says with that same eagerness, strive to enter into heaven. The Greek word for strive, agonizomai, originally referred to the effort put forth by a contestant in an athletic contest to qualify for the prize. And hence came to mean in a general sense to struggle to exhort oneself. Agonizomai is sometimes used in the New Testament of the Christian's effort to qualify for entrance into the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 25, Colossians 1 verse 29. This word agonizomai is also translated fight in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12 with reference to fighting the good fight of faith. You can also check 2 Timothy 4, 7. So, friend of mine, we must be eager like the soldiers to do whatever we need to do through the strength of Christ to become victorious Christians. Number four, if we will be saved, if we will be saved at last, we must be obedient to the divine instructions found in the Bible, the word of God. Whatever God instructed Gideon to do, he did. We see again, if we will be saved at last, we must be obedient to the divine instructions found in the Bible, the word of God. Whatever God instructed Gideon to do, he did. Judges chapter 7 verse 9 says, And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Fura thy servant down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he, Gideon, down with Fura his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host of Midian. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Like Gideon, if we would be saved at last, we must be obedient to all the divine instructions. God told Gideon, take your servant Fura and go down to the camp. And he went down. Point number five, God has established the church as a community of believers, not only to carry the gospel to the world, but that the members will be a support to each other, even as Fura was to Gideon. We say that again. God has established the church as a community of believers, not only to carry the gospel to the world, but that the members will be a support one to the other, even as Fura was a support to Gideon. As we serve God, we hold hands together and support each other towards the kingdom. The Bible is clear. Romans chapter 12 and verse 5 says, So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Every one members one of another. Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 says, Brethren, brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Even Jesus felt the need for human support when he walked on earth, especially during the crucifixion weekend. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 38, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. I need your support. Tarry ye here, watch with me, pray with me. And so God has established the church 
that we will support each other into the kingdom, even as Fura supported Gideon and vice versa. Point number six that we can glean from this account as it parallels the great controversy and our involvement in this controversy and our desire to be saved. Point number six is that success in the spiritual life requires a combination of human effort and divine power. Gideon did all he could do with God's guidance and Israel won the battle against the Midianites. We say that again. Gideon did all he could do with God's guidance and Israel won the battle against the Midianites. Likewise, success in the spiritual life requires a combination of human effort and divine power. Judges chapter 7 verse 16, 17, 18 and 22 declares, And he, Joshua, divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pictures and lamps within the pictures. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And the three hundred blew the trumpets. And the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Bethshitta in Zerarah, and to the border of Abel Meholah unto Tabath. As in the battle between Israel and the Midianites, success in the spiritual life requires a combination of human effort and divine power. Inspiration says, All heaven has been looking on with interest and ready to do whatever God might appoint to help fallen men and women to become what God would have them. God will work for his children, but not without their cooperation. They must have indomitable energy and a constant desire to become all that it is possible for them to become. End of quote. Review and Herald, April 8, 1890. And Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ will strengthen me, but I still have to do <laughs> with the strength that God gives. Oh, friend of mine, as we depend on God daily, by prayer, Bible reading, Bible study, church attendance, and witnessing, and service for Christ, we will experience victories in our life here on earth and will be saved in God's kingdom when he comes the second time. We say again, as we depend on God daily by prayer, Bible reading, and Bible study, church attendance, and witnessing, and the service for Christ, we will experience victories in our life here on earth, in our lives here on earth, and will be saved in God's kingdom when he comes the second time. A friend of mine, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18 tells us how we can win the spiritual battle in our personal lives. Oh, friend of mine, may God help us, like Gideon, to so obey him and to cooperate with him, so that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we shall be saved when Jesus comes, and we will remain throughout life on the winning side, for Jesus is the winning side. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for reminding us that when we labor with you, we will always win. Thank you for reminding us that you are more than able to deliver us in the battles of life. Thank you for Gideon and his example of obedience. As we go through this week, we know not what battles we will face, but we know that with the strength that comes from serving you, we will be victorious in whatever challenges we face. Be with each person, Lord, who has put aside the time to hear your word. Bless them, Lord. Be with those who have shared this message with somebody bless them too and father be with all those who have made prayer requests we ask their god that you will answer their prayers and their requests 
and may they return to give you praise and thanks. Thank you, Lord, for a successful day. We give you praise and thanks for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.